Hello, YouTube. In this video, we're going to take a look at uh, installing macOS 9 as the only operating system on the iMac G3. It's been a while since this machine has showed up in a video, so I figured it would be a good idea. There's also some uh, other videos I'm going to make about this machine. I'm going to restore, uh, this I'm going to try to restore uh, using FireWire at some point. I just discovered that I have right angled uh, FireWire cable. That's the only cable I have. And I cannot use that with this iMac because the uh, fireware ports are mounted vertically on the machine and I cannot fit the cable in there. So while I'm waiting for a different fireware cable to come over, um, we're just going to install macOS 9 um, pretty much in a regular way. The version of macOS 9 I've got here is a 9.2.2 image. It is the macOS 9 libs image made in 2013. And, uh, we're going to be completely wiping the hard drive of this machine, which now contains macOS 9.2.2 and um, macOS 10.10.2.8 Jaguar. We're just going to make this a classic machine. In other words, we're going to be wiping macOS 10 completely. We're going to initialize the entire drive and uh, install just macOS 9. Originally, this is a summer 2001 model, so it would have shipped with macOS 9.1. But uh, I cannot find any great images on that, and I personally like 922 more because it's more up to date. And uh, if need arises, we could always let's just cancel that. Um, add some more memory. For now, we've got 384 megabytes installed. I could upgrade this to 512, um, but I don't think it will need that much. I think 384 is more than enough. Okay, let's initialize the drive. Let's see here. We want to. Okay, initialization will destroy all data on the following volumes, Mac and Macintosh HD and OS X HD, that's completely fine. And one new partition, one Mac OS, initialize. Completely wipe the drive, please. Okay, now we've got one volume named Untitled. This disk can be initialized. Good. Apparently it didn't. Okay, uh, let's take a look here. It's 30 gigabytes. Yep, that's correct. The selected disk can be used as the startup disk only for PowerPC computers. Well, that's what we want. Let's initialize. Initialization was successful. Okay. Let's see, let's change the name now. And uh, there's also Macintosh HD on the uh, desktop there. So I've changed the first H to a lower case so we can differentiate them. Okay, let's go to macOS 9 lives again. Software restore, I think that's all we have to do. There's the image, okay. Erase Macintosh HD before restoring. Select the configuration, sure. System folder and everything else, okay. Oh. I wonder what's uh, in this image, but uh, we'll see. Restore. Proceed, yes. Okay, so now it's going to read from the image file and it's going to restore the Mac OS 9 image to the hard drive. Being that this image was made in 2013, that makes me believe that all the updates should be in here and uh, probably some very handy utilities. I haven't checked on it, didn't do any research. We're just going to go through this uh, together here. And, uh, but I'm not gonna make everybody wait for this process to finish because I would, uh, I would imagine this is going to take a while. So through the magic of video editing, this will only take a couple of seconds for you guys. Okay, well, we can at least initialize this drive now. I've got it in USB enclosure. This is a 100 gig drive. I just had laid around. 
gonna name this disk restore and then I'm gonna take it back to another Mac and uh, put the image on there. First we gotta initialize this so we can use it on Mac OS 9. Okay. Disk restore now on the desktop. So now I need to go back to a different Mac and uh, put the image on the drive and see if that wants to work. I'll be right back. All right, we're on the desktop of another Mac. This is my 2006 Mac, MacBook Pro. So here we can see the restore disk. The annoying thing is that for some reason, not a single Intel Mac can write to uh, Apple partition map drives anymore, which is something I just encountered as well. And my menu bar is spacing out like a madman. But I can't be arsed to repair that right now. Let's take a look here. It says read write. Partition map non formatted. Wow, that's weird. Okay, let's go one partition. Let's go Apple partition map. Prep this again. And I'm going to go back to the iMac and see if we can if we'll recognize the drive now without having to initialize it, because if I reinitialize it, it's probably going to fuck itself up. And for some reason, that fixed the menu bar, so this drive was apparently freaking out. Well, that's interesting. Okay, so I'm going to take this back to the iMac, and I'll be back in a jiffy. Okay. So, well, I don't know how this uh, recording is going to look, so just keep that in mind. I haven't tested this. This is a Core Duo machine, anyway. Um, I've hooked it up to the iMac. I could see the partition. I could make a folder on it. And uh, so that's working now. So we can now write to this volume properly. So all we really need then is go to the ISO, Mac OS, get the appropriate image, which is in this case the um, universal install ISO. Temporarily unavailable. I mean, what? Well, let's drag it over to the desktop then. Unexpected error. Maybe I should unmount it on my desktop here on the right, so because <laughs> it's uh, I had it mounted in on my Hackintosh, maybe that was the problem. And no way did that ever go that fast. It's a corrupted file. Let's try that again. Yeah, now it's copying just fine. There we go, file for MX transferred. So now we can use Spotlight again. Oh, nice. Disk utility. Okay. Let's see if we can restore this image directly to the drive. I don't think so because it is an ISO image and uh, typically Disk utility doesn't really like it when you restore uh, ISO files. Maybe we can. See source ISO file target restore. Wait, uh, don't erase. Thank you. Restore. Put my password. It needs to be image scanned. Oh god, we're gonna get in that loop, aren't we? Ah, <sighs> sure. Yeah, ISOs don't have freaking. Oh god. Okay, let's mount the image then. Let's restore the volume that's inside of it. Okay, we crashed disk utility, I think. Oh, there it is. I think we can restore it this way. And now I think I can erase it. I'm just going to assume that it is Apple partition map because it's an OS 9 image. Let's see if this works. <sighs> Not permitted. What? 
What is this bull crap? Seriously. Is this image protected for, from restoring or something? Because right now the only thing I can still do is just do this and hope that the script that's inside the restore uh, application is actually going to work. Oh well. Because now we're just going to have to wait. Just a couple more seconds. Okay, there we go. I can close those windows down. Now we're going to go back to the iMac and see if we can still see the volume and whether we can run the application or not. Fingers crossed. Alright, so we're back at the iMac and yes, we can in fact see the files on the restore disk, which is good. We can go to a restore and hope that it will actually restore from this particular uh, volume. To restore the version of macOS 9 lives to, onto macOS 9 lives using Macintosh extended volume format. Contents will be erased. Okay, that's fine. I'm just going to hope that it's using the correct image. Restore. Erase, yes, please. Yep, it is working, it is running from the drive. I'll well, take that into image there. As you can see, that, that is actually the original 100 gigabyte drive from the MacBook Pro. And it is working perfectly. This is going to go awfully slow though, only one megabyte per second. So restoring this should take about 10 to 15 minutes. And uh, once that's done, we'll get back to it. It is approaching the end now. It's calculating the checksum, so I'm guessing that after this it should be done. And uh, we're going to find out whether that's the case. Yep, successfully restored. All right. Thank God that USB took off the way it did, right? Okay, let's take a look at the Mac OS 9 Lips volume now. Yep, we've got application folder, documents folder, and a system folder. Okay. So, what we could probably do now is, um, let's see, set the startup disk. Can we do that? No, we cannot. Okay. In that case, we're just going to restart the machine. I'm going to hold down the option key so we can uh, eject the CD from the drive because it's still in there. Okay. And then the hard drive comes back to life. I'm not even sure if we can eject the disk at this point. So I'm pushing the eject key, but I don't think these work yet on the iMac. Doesn't seem like it does. I'm just gonna wait a little bit for the watch to stop. Okay. No, it doesn't. Okay, well that's fine. Anyway. Let's just boot into OS 9 now. Our only Mac OS 9 lives image. It's on a hard drive. Which is a 30 gigabytes max hard drive, I think. I don't even remember which drive I put in this. I originally got it with a 20 gigabyte Seagate drive that was even louder than this. I can't remember what I replaced it with. I know it's a 30 gig, but I don't know which brand. It could, uh, it could also be a quantum fireball for all I know. Alright. Well, that booted up pretty quickly. Great job with that. Wait for desktop to load. It was insufficient memory to initialize remote access during system startup. And I wouldn't probably mean RAM, I mean 384 megs is more than enough for this usually. Okay. Oh god, now the screen just goes bananas.
Well, at least we get the full experience from the restore. I live in other. Please tell the name of the country where you are located. The Netherlands. There we go. Continue. How do I like Apple to contact me? No. Company to provide products to contact me? No. Oh dear god. Okay, I'm gonna fill this in. I'll be back shortly. Alright, it's all filled in. You want to connect to the internet? Nope. There's no ethernet in this particular room. Because this is my room where I do random shit. That I can't do in my own room because of space sake. So, yeah. Well, one thing I'm kind of partial about is the fact that they didn't include the eject strip, but I guess we could just pull this down and it should eject. There we go. It's just like Mac OS X. Exactly, it's Mac OS 9 lives. Let's go to Bud's computer. Wow, that came up quickly. 384 megs of RAM. We're basically using about 35 megs right now. That's that's it. Let's go to the system profiler and take a look around. We have Mac OS ROM version 10.2.1. This does include QuickTime 6, wow. QuickTime 603. System is 922 US. Sadly, I want to put it in my main language, which is what we're going to do as soon as I get that firewall cable in. That should be much less of a hassle than getting this running was. Anyway, okie dokie. Devices and volumes, that's what I want to know. Hard drive. Oh, it's a Western Digital 30 gig drive, okay. I thought it was either a, a Mac store or like, a, or a Quantum, but apparently not. It's a Western Digital drive, okay. That is fine. See the ROM drive as well, which is probably a Matsushita of some sorts. Yeah, probably. Not much else really to uh, show there. It's looking very clean. Does it include any applications then? It does, it includes Acrobat Reader 5. We have iTunes. That's pretty much it. Let's go iTunes. Let's see what version this is. Accepts. Use for internet playback, sure. Uh, no, don't automatically connect because we're using dial-up after all. <clears throat> no, we're not. Add myself later. iTunes 2, I'm guessing. About iTunes. Yeah, iTunes 204 from 2002. All right, that's pretty cool. I could use this as my jukebox any day of the week. But then again, I could just install Mac OS X if I wanted to, because these are run up to Tiger, albeit slowly. Um. Yeah, I guess there's not really all that much to show anymore. I'm currently on the uh, native resolution, which is 800 by 695 hertz. Um, and everything seems to be working fine. As far as I can tell. It responds pretty quickly. Network browser, yeah, well, of course, there is no network connected. So all kinds of errors. But I think this is it for now, for this uh, video. For getting Mac OS 9 running on this. It's uh, surely been an experience, to say the least. I hope you enjoyed this regardless, and uh, stay tuned for the video. We're going to uh, restore a Dutch uh, version of Mac OS 9 back to the hard drive using an iBook and a Firewire cable. So we can... Uh, that's going to be the final setup for the iMac G3. Mac OS 9 in my main language, and then I'm going to install a couple of games and play some stuff on it. I think that should be a pretty cool video. But for now, I just wanted to get this uh, classic Mac video first. Hope you enjoyed it, and I thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.